So, you know, moving on to our next and final topic, what should the Padres do with this rotation mess that has just happened with Lamette being injured? Uh, I think we're, I mean, we could talk about options, but I think we've got to, we got to talk about why, you know, we're, we're bringing this up. And I feel like it's a hot topic in the Padres community right now. Um, Denelson Lamette goes down after two innings pitched. Uh, not a very good look for this, for this Padres rotation, considering he was, uh, a, a, probably our, he was our ace last year. He was in the, in the running for the Cy Young, Cy Young award. And he goes out and he hasn't pitched a single game past five innings, I believe. Um, in the last, I saw someone say in the last 200 something days, he's only had six outs past five innings. So, um, as much as we love Denelson Lamet, you know, we're huge fans of Nels- Denelson Lamet. We think he's an ace in this league that we think when he's healthy and he has good stuff, he's probably one of the top 10 pitchers in this league, maybe top five, because he's just that dominant. But the reality of it is he's just not healthy right now. Um, second time coming out with this injury and we brought up the bullpen is on track to throw the most innings by a bullpen ever. Um, and that's because, you know, Snell's going out there on, on the road and he's throwing one, two, three, four innings at times. And then Paddock's going out there at times and he's throwing three, four innings. Uh, lately, Paddock's been a lot better, but we saw against the Diamondbacks, he struggled. So that didn't help matters. And then Lamette's second time coming out. You know, this is starting to get really taxing on the bullpen. We're starting to see some fatigue in these arms. Mark Melanson up until uh, the you know, closing the diving vaccine, we had saw he had been struggling a little bit. Tim Hill starting to struggle a little bit. Um, obviously getting guys back like Drew Pomerantz and Pierce Johnson, that's going to be very vital to this team. Hopefully Matt Strom down the road as well. But it, it's tough to ignore that there needs to be arms added to this rotation. Um, but just one arm. I'm, I don't know why I said it plural, but there needs to be an arm added to this rotation. Um, we talked about Max Scherzer not that long ago, but the Nationals just went on a nine and one run, second in their division. And that's not saying that come deadline, you know, the Nationals are still going to be hot. It, it, it could very well turn. Um, but, you know, who knows what's going to be the deal with Max Scherzer? He's going to be the top candidate for every team. So we're, we would probably have to give up a lot for him. Uh, you know, so Chase, what do you think? Like, what do you think about this whole rotation situation? What, obviously, the in house option would be Ryan Weathers, but uh, what do you think? Yeah, there's there's not a lot of in-house options that you would feel comfortable with outside of Ryan Weathers just kind of, just because he's kind of like a proven commodity at this point, even though like his baseball savant numbers kind of show otherwise. I'd say you could always bring up Gore and let him struggle at the major league level and let him learn there because obviously whatever's going on in AAA is, is not working. I don't know if it's like a pitching coach. I don't know if it's a mental barrier that he needs to get across Whatever, it just needs to change, and maybe some new scenery would be good for him. Reggie and the other top prospects coming back from injury, as is Anderson Espinosa, so those two are scratched out. Uh, there's always oh, uh, Evan Miller doing all right, but I still think he's only like a mid-relief type pitcher. Um, outside of those guys, you don't really have a lot of in-house options, and you know, speaking of Matt Strom, he would be a great person to have back right now because we saw that he used as an opener and being able to piggyback him with uh, Snell on pro games would be amazing just because, hey, Snell, you know what? We're only expecting you to go three innings this time, and we're going to have Strom take the rest of it, like three another three innings for you because we're just going to ease you in on the road because there's no way we're like – Go let you go full throttle with the way you've been doing. Um, so yeah, I, I I expect the Padres to add an arm because I don't want Lamette starting anymore. I I've been the biggest Lamette believer since he came up into the league with the Padres, but there's just been too many injuries. I mean, this is his second time on the IL with the same arm injury, same forearm injury, and you can't stretch him out anymore. You can't. You got to let him, you got to be, you got to let him be an all-star closer. That That's exactly what I think. But Lanson, guess what? You just got bumped on the setup, man, because guess what? This man is just that much better than you. <laughs> that's my yeah, that's, opinion. Yeah. Uh, it, it's a hot take, but it's also a popular take that you have right there. Um, and I'm not even opposed to it either. I think, you know, when you have an arm as dominant as Denelson LeMay, you don't want to take him out of the, out of the rotation. You don't want to take him out of this set of arms that you have because he's just that good. Um, he, you know, I think, I think Tingler, Preller, they all have this idea in their mind that he is a starter and yeah, he's a dominant starter when he's healthy, 
But I don't think the idea of taking him out of the rotation and putting him in the bullpen, maybe not for the long run, but at least for now, you know, get him to, you know, get him to throw some innings, see how his arm's feeling after those, after those, you know, two, three innings that he throws out of the bullpen and, um, you know, see what happens from there. Maybe even one inning because we can't afford to lose an arm like Nelson Lamette. You know, we're not, we're not only looking for now, we're looking for the long run. This team, this team is built for, for many years, this team is built to be a contender for many years down the road, and the Nelson's the Nelson Lamette's going to be a huge part of that. I I believe that. Um, you know, Chase brought up he's been one of the biggest Lamette fans, and um, I, I, for a little while I liked Patrick more than Lamette, but that's because you know when you don't see someone for so long, it's hard to it's hard to really have a, an opinion on them still. But you know, when he came back, he flashed that electricity that he brings to this team, brings to the mound. Uh, you know, every start that he has. Uh, but regarding health, it's, it's tough to see him go out there and come out again for the second time and, you know, in, in the span of two months and the third time in the span of what, since October? A year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's really tough to see. But regarding out of health and, and, and when it comes to the in-house options, you know, Jace Tingler brought up Ryan Webb is most likely in-house option. And that'll probably happen. And you brought up Matt Strom as well. That's going to be huge to this team. Uh, no offense to Nabil Chris, Matt. He he has been doing this team really, really well, but uh, he he's not going to be able to hold up. And, and it's really unfair to him to have him go out there and throw a lot of innings, you know, as a long reliever because he has had some good outings as a long reliever. But at, at the same time, he's had to go out there after a Blake Snell outing or a Chris Paddock outing, and he's had to get roughed up. And you can't blame that on him. You know, he's not a starter. He's not a he's not built to be that kind of guy. So, um, you know, all credit to this bullpen, no matter what they've blown, you can't put everything on them because it's very hard to go out there and, and throw as many innings as they have and be as successful as they have with the best DRA in baseball and out of the bullpen. Uh, but Chase, what are some out of house options that you got? Uh, if, if the Marlins continue to do as bad as they do, and I'm completely hoping they do, because in a month, I'm hoping that they sit at the bottom of the lineup all right, bottom of the standings, and they're like, wow, how can we sell this team again? What can we possibly do? <laughs> and there's just going to be that gem, that Sandy Alcantara. He's having a really good year. He has a career 3.55 ERA. He has a 3.12 ERA. He has the most innings pitched in the league, which is exactly what we need. <laughs> we need a guy that can go out there and eat innings and sit around a 3-3-3 to ERA. That is exactly what we need. He fits the description perfectly. That's what we need. And that's only if the Marlins continue to be the the dog that they are right now. So they're sitting at the bottom of the NL. So I'm hoping it stays that way. Because you know what? The Pirates don't got a lot of options. I don't trust Pirate pitching. I mean, it worked out for us because, you know, we know Joe Musgrove was going to be that breakout guy. But other than that, it's kind of hard to see who's going to be the next guy that's going to be like that. As we saw the Yankees kind of burn out with Jamison Tyon. But there can be a few guys in the NL. Um, and you know what? Hopefully the Nationals continue to fall out because, you know, maybe we can just snag one of their pitchers too. Yeah. Um, someone that I've seen kind of thrown around a little bit is, and he has not had many good years by any means. This is kind of just, I don't know what his contract looks like. Hopefully it's just this year because the years past, he's, he hasn't been very good. Uh, but Kyle Gibson's having a pretty solid year right now, throwing around a two ERA. Um, and I'm not the biggest Kyle Gibson fan, but, you know, I'll turn into a fan if he can constantly give us what he's given the Rangers right now, which he's throwing at least five and a third in, in each outing. And, you know, it seems like he's averaging around six right now. So I think that'd be a very good addition. We were talking about uh, the innings eater concept, and that's kind of not been around for a while, um, which sucks because I'd love to have an innings eat, a cheap innings eater right now to be able to fill that fifth spot while maybe we may wait for Lamette to get healthy or we, you know, whenever the bullpen needs a rest, hopefully this guy has a three, four ERA in the, in the lineup, which we know is very capable of doing the rest. Um, but right now I think Kyle Gibson would be a decent option. I don't know how expensive he would be. A lot of people have also brought up Joey Gallo. So maybe a little package for Gibson and Gallo uh, is a, is a slight possibility. Who knows? Uh, you know, we the know Preller's what, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's <laughs> dude. Preller. That's why I bring up the Rangers because Preller, that's his favorite team. That's why I bring up the Rangers all the time with these trades. Um, Kyle Gibson's definitely the Rangers, not. The Rangers are just the Padres' second AAA team. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, that's exactly what it seems like. 
which, you know, in this case, maybe it'll benefit us, you know, and I'm not opposed to seeing it. The the big, big, big option, which I'm, we're going to talk about again right now, I feel like we should. And the team is hot right now. And this name's getting thrown around a lot, Max Scherzer. Um, I, I was I was reading and I was listening to a podcast and it said, "Would you be willing to give up Ryan Weathers if it if it meant getting Max Scherzer?" So here I ask you, Chase, would you be willing to give up Ryan Weathers if it meant having half a year of Max Scherzer? I'd be okay with it. Okay. I think I'd be okay with it. It, it would sting a little bit, I'm not going to lie, because Ryan Weathers has kind of been that guy, and he sort of helped us a lot. And against the Dodgers, he has kind of been the Dodger killer. They kind of haven't figured him out, and we got rid of the other guy that was the Dodger killer. So, And Lamette is kind of hurt, so you don't have that guy anymore. So it would hurt to see him go. But if you look at the advanced statistics, it's kind of showing that he's been outperforming himself. Going based off advanced statistics, it's kind of hard to say because he does pass the eye test for the most part. So I feel like he could either bloom into a star or we got rid of him at the, his highest value. It's one of those things where you don't know how it's going to turn out. But hey, you know what? There's always a chance that we can back and get Ryan Weathers a few years later because the Rangers just suck that bad. <laughs> or not the Rangers. <laughs> the, the, Nationals might be, the Nationals might just be that bad in a couple of years because we saw outside that World Series year that they are probably the most inconsistent team in baseball. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, when it comes to trading Ryan Weathers, it's definitely probably a sensitive topic in the Padres community because – he has gone out there and he's he's had some really good outings against the Dodgers and he's had some really good really good outings in general. But are you know and and I don't know how I feel about this, but I know there's a lot of Padres fans that are willing to trade the future for a World Series right now. And the way this team looks, this this team's built for it. You know, this lineup is built for it. This rotation, you add Max Scherzer, can kind of look at it like this. You know, the way the Dodgers they lost Corey Seager. They didn't sit around. They made a move. They got Manny Machado, and they didn't win the World Series, but at, they showed, you know, they got there. And that's the thing for us. You know, we need to make we need to be able to make constant progress throughout the years. You know, this past year we went to the NLDS. This year we've got to go to the NLCS, and we don't want to stop there. And if you get Max Scherzer, that shows you don't want to stop there. That shows that you're all in right now. Um, this Padres team has been willing to, to spend the money, and if you, if you trade off Ryan Weathers, you know, you're getting a guy that's going to go out there. He's going to do everything that we want. He's going to provide relief to the bullpen. He's going to be an ace. Can you imagine having you Darvish and Ma you Darvish, Max Scherzer, and Joe Musgrove starting games one through three in a five game series in the NLDS to get us to our goal of advancing to the NLCS around further than we advanced last year? That's amazing. You know, that's what you that's what you want. And um, uh, I think there's a lot of Padres fans that would be on board. Hopefully, the Nationals cool down a little bit because you know Kyle Schwarber is going insane right now. Uh, but hopefully this national team cools down a little bit. Max Scherzer is going to be a really hot team, really hot commodity among a lot of teams in the in the in the playoff race. So, uh, any last opinions on out of house options, or I guess particularly Max Scherzer? I love Mad Max. I I love him as a pitcher. I I used to be like eh, but now I, I like watching baseball and watching him more. You just like. Dude, he's something special, and watching him pitch is just something else. The The whole thing with Joe Girardi and him getting three times, I was on the side of Max Scherzer. I loved his yeah. little – he threw the glove. He's in the dugout <laughs> shouting at Girardi, like, I don't got nothing, and Girardi got ejected. I was laughing. My ass. I was laughing so hard, dude. Thank I love Max for his little shenanigans and stuff like that. Him coming out and pitching with, like, a broken nose the next day, you know, bleeding and everything. That I think that's all cool and everything. But I, I just got one question for you. How do you feel about selling the farm for a World Series ring? Or do you think the answer more in the middle? Um, being a San, a San, you know, being a San from, I was born over there in San Diego. The Chargers left. The Chargers brought zero ring, zero championships to the city. <laughs> the Padres have been irrelevant for a really long time. We keep Abrams. We keep Gore. I'm absolutely not opposed to selling the farm for a World Series right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I'm, I'm just not. I think, and, and Derek Togerson on NBC, and when I was listening to this podcast, he brought up that he thinks many San Diegans would sell the farm right now to win a World Series right now and suck for the next five years. I don't feel comfortable with that. I want to be good for a long time. I don't want to do what the Cubs did, bro. Yeah, I, I, I want to do it. I don't want to do whatever the Nationals did because they were irrelevant yet last year, and they're on the cusp of irrelevancy this year, and they practically have the same team. Exactly. So, I, don't, I don't. I don't. I don't want to suck. Like, I don't want to suck again. <laughs> My philosophy is: is keep your guys that you're gonna think are gonna be superstars, and then the other ones that have all star potential, get rid of them. You don't need them. Yeah, and because you can what... probably. Get you keep you keep like the building plots of the future. You keep your Mackenzie Gores. You keep your CJ Abrams. Ryan Brothers, yeah, he's a great commodity to have, but he's expendable. Same thing with Campuzano with the way that Brandon Val- um, Valenzuela has been batting, dude. He, like you get these guys that, yeah, you don't want to get. You want them in the future, but hey, you know what? To win a World Series wing right now, for how irrelevant the Padres have been for the past twelve years, and it's Last year, yeah, I would I would sell the top three through five prospects for a World Series ring. Yeah, absolutely. And if that's what it takes to get Mad Max, I'm all for it. Um, you know, Mad Max has – he's won a ring. He's been in the big time before. He's pitched great against the Dodgers before. Um, yeah, I, I think this team is fully, fully equipped to go on and win a World Series right now, and I think, you know, we deserve it as fans. Uh, so never know what the Padres are going to do. Dennis Lynn did bring up he, he he wouldn't be surprised if AJ Peller does make a blockbuster move. Would anyone be surprised if AJ Peller makes a block, blockbuster move? No. It's just he makes blockbuster moves even if the Padres are irrelevant. That's exactly. <laughs> just this thing he's like another year. Yep, exactly. What can I do to shock the baseball world? <laughs> exactly. And you love to see it. You know, this team's all in. And if they get Mad Max, even more, even better. We're all in. We want to win now. Uh, but Chase, any last thoughts? No, nah, I just want this team to be built for the future end now. I just don't want to spend everything on on one ring. That's just my opinion. I agree. Cool. Sounds good. Uh, you know, thank you to everyone for listening. Uh, if you guys have any any opinions, any comments, leave them down in the comment section. Who you guys think could be a out of house option? What you guys think about this bullpen? Um, you know, any opinions you guys have, let us know. Maybe we'll talk about it in another episode, but thank you guys for listening and we'll, we'll talk to you guys soon.